Hey folks, Dr. Rob Jones here, HeyDrRob.com. We've been watching all the previous videos we've done on how to take care of your back, how to mitigate pain if you have a disc issue or flexion intolerance. Again, the, the pain that comes on because you've been rounding your spine too much, the pain that comes on because you've taken your spine out of lordosis, okay? We've bent forward too much, the discs have come back. The next couple of videos are actually gonna be about the exact opposite of the what happens when you have that flexion intolerance. It's actually extension intolerance and the categories of problems that can arise because of too much extension. So if you're a swimmer or diver or you were, if you were a gymnast or are, if you were a dancer or are, and you've spent a lot of time extending back, you're not gonna actually have problems with the discs. You're gonna end up having problems with, with what are called the posterior elements of the spine, okay? Now the posterior elements, are basically the facet joints, which are these joints right through here that basically facilitate the movement of the spine, okay? As you get older, if you extend too much through those joints, they will actually break down and get arthritic. If you've seen the elderly uh, folks who have um, those little bumps on their fingers are called um, Heberdeen's nodes, those are actually arthritic bumps from the joints slamming together. So those will actually happen in the facet joints as well. So you see an x-ray or an MRI of these things, we call that facet arthropathy or degenerative arthritis of the facet joint. So that joint literally will wear down and it will get these spurs on it and you'll actually get bumps. And you can actually feel them specifically in the neck, not as much in the lower back, but they're, they're painful. And the symptom pattern is pain on extension, okay? So if you have a spondylolisthesis, which I mentioned in the previous video on the whiteboard, if you wanna review that, you can go back to that video and find it. If you're older and you have some degenerative arthritis in your back, typically these types of pain situations are gonna give you pain with extension. If you're a younger person, you know, below the age of 30, you probably don't have arthritis in your back. And if you have painful extension, it's usually because you've either got a spondylolisthesis or a spondylolysis, or one of these facet joints is just irritated. So we need to avoid extension, not do the extension work we did with flexion intolerance, and of course, we don't want to do flexion to mitigate this. We actually want to use neutral spine. We'll get to that in a second. So again, if you have extension intolerance, pain when you lean back that gets better when you bend forward, pain when you lean back or walk that gets better when you sit, typically it's an extension intolerance issue. If you're older, over the age of 60, some people will have this this thing that I'm getting ready to explain called stenosis in younger ages if it's congenital, but typically when degenerative arthritis sets in, what will happen is this. The spine will actually break down through the discs and these little holes where these nerve roots come out to form the sciatic nerve, those holes will actually get smaller. They'll push on the nerve root. So if this is the nerve root, and this is the hole, as that degeneration occurs, it's gonna literally pinch that nerve off. And people with degenerative stenosis, it can be on the outside of the nerve or it can be in the central canal. Typically, they have a lot of pain with extension, pain that gets worse when they walk, and they typically have to bend over like this or sit to make the pain go away. So if you see that elderly person in the grocery store leaning over the grocery cart while they're walking along, or that elderly person that is bent over like this walking along, it's typically because they have stenosis and they cannot extend because if they do, they're gonna put pressure directly on that nerve. As you can see here, as you extend back, those holes close off, okay? And they will send shooting pains down the legs. It's, it's, a, really, it's a really tough situation to get rid of when you're, when you're older, okay? These exercises can help. Um, in the younger populations where you just have a little extension intolerance or some spondylolysis or a little spondylolisthesis, facet issue like I mentioned previously, we can do these exercises to mitigate that. Number one, like always, you want to find lordosis, okay? You don't want to be an extension, you just want to find a nice lordosis and you need to adhere to all the movement protocols we talked about, okay? So if you don't know what those are, if this is the first time you've watched me, go back and look at previous videos on how to move. Hinging with your hips, kicking your leg back, dropping to a knee, etc. Okay? Again, this is an extension issue 
too much of this has irritated the posterior elements. So we actually need to find neutral spine to correct this. Okay. And what we mean by neutral spine is basically a position in your lower back that doesn't have too much extension and of course doesn't have too much flexion because we don't want to rob Peter to pay Paul. Okay. We don't want to go, Oh gosh, I have extension pain. I'm, I'm like this. And you don't want to go in full flexion because now you're going to end up with a disc bulge and create a whole separate situation. Okay. So what we mean by neutral is just a position that you can be in when you stand where you don't have pain. And it's again, in that relative lordosis. And what I tell people is standing is if you just squeeze your butt muscles, what that does is it will put you into a little bit of what we call a posterior pelvic tilt. And it will actually take the spine from maybe a little bit too much extension. You squeeze the glutes, the ilium will tilt back and that spine will actually stay in lordosis, but it will actually have a little less extension. So you will garner some relief from that. So people who have pain walking, I typically tell them if you're walking along and have some pain, it's usually because you've started to default into what we call lower cross syndrome or a sway back was the term that used to be used 20, 30 years ago. So if you just squeeze your stop and squeeze your glutes, that will give you relief. You'll be in neutral spine. Then what you can do is tighten up your core muscles the way I've taught you in the past. If you don't know how to do that, just put your fingers around your midsection cough or clear your throat, bracing your core while you're in a butt squeeze basically is going to lock your spine into that neutral position. Now you can't walk with your glute squeeze because you're going to wobble like a penguin. So what you want to do is just keep your core contracted and then just let go of your glutes and now you can walk and you won't default into that extension and you should get some relief from walking. Okay. That's number one. Now, number two is understanding that when you do some hip movement, or when you do some back movement this way, you need to do it through the hip joints, not through the lower back. Okay. So what I mean by this is you, if you have extension and tolerance, you bend back, ouch, it hurts, or the symptoms are what they are, like I mentioned earlier, you are bending back too much this way. But if you learn how to brace and use your glutes, you can actually create extension through the hips. So you go back this way through the hip joint without creating a lot of extension through the spine, standing and lying down. So let's do that. So if you want to learn how to extend through the hip joints, not the spine, go through that same process we just talked about. You squeeze the glutes, you brace the core, and then you squeeze the glutes harder as you lean back. And what you'll feel is tension through here, through your glutes, You'll feel a little stretch of your hip joints and you'll feel a little extension there, but not much. And then you can come back forward. Okay. Now that is for people like linemen who look up at, at junction boxes or whatever you're doing up on the poles for painters. Okay. If you have, if you have to look up, squeeze your glutes, brace your core and lean back. And as you lean back, squeeze your glutes harder and you'll be in hip extension, not lumbar extension. That will give you some relief. Okay. If you lean back and you feel this kind of crushing sensation, you know, this tension in your lower back and of course pain, you know, your lumbar extending. Okay. So that's number one standing. Number two, when you get on the ground, you want to actually do these exercises to incorporate that neutral spine movement. So you don't actually cause irritation and hyperextend again. So first thing we're going to do is a bird dog and we did the bird dog before with the flexion and tolerance spine and with the disc injury. And you just do the same thing with your extension injury. Now, if you have a flexion and tolerance injury, it's going to feel better when you drop down an extension, because like we talked about, the disc pulls back in. But if you have an extension and tolerance back where this hurts, what you're going to want to do is just a short little bit of cat camel, just like this. And then you're going to want to have just a nice kind of soft lordosis until you feel like you don't have any pain. From this point, what you're going to do is brace your core like we talked about before, cough or clear your throat and you'll feel it tense. Don't suck your belly button back in. And what you're going to do first is extend your leg back. Now, what, what a lot of people will do, especially my patients who have extension and tolerance because they're used to extending so much, they will go right into lumbar extension, which is this, which is causing the problem. So what I want you to do with this is slide your toe along the ground. Pick it up just until you feel your glute contract. You can see mine kind of bubble up there. 
That's hip extension. My spine is maintained neutral. I can bring this arm up. Now I'm going to do a nice bird dog. Hold this till you get tired. Bring it back. Again, find that neutral. If you are pain-free and you have sclerosis, you're in neutral. Same thing, we're going to slide the toe along. Pick the leg up until you feel the glute contract, which is going to give you hip extension. Raise the arm. Now we're in perfect neutral position. And by doing this, you're actually training your core muscles and your gluteal muscles to keep your spine in that neutral position. So again, just like other videos, bird dog 10, 15, 20 seconds per side until you get a little tired. And then you basically do a couple of rounds of that. Okay, you can do it once, twice, three times a day. It's up to you. Great time to do is before you walk. Okay, so again, here, glute contraction. If you're strong, you can sweep the ground. You can do kind of some squares or some circles or some up downs, but again, not defaulting to hyperextension. So that's number one, that's our bird dog. Okay. Number two, we have to use the glutes to create movement and ambulate. So of course we want to do bridges and half side bridges. Okay. So on our bridges, what we're going to do is the same thing. We're always going to look for neutral. We don't want to press the back to the ground because that's too much flexion. We don't want a huge tunnel here. We just want to get into a little bit of up and down motion until you can feel that man right there. It feels pretty good on pain free, bracing the core to lock the spine in place, a little bit of outward knee movement to engage the glutes. So you don't over engage the hamstrings, drive through your heels, keeping the knees moving laterally. You should feel a nice glute contraction, core contraction, no pain in your spine, hip hinging back down while your knees come apart. If you get a hamstring cramp, which is really common, okay, you're letting your knees come in, okay? If you feel that hamstring, push your feet out this way, feel for that glute to engage. Again, a couple of sets of this until you feel your glutes contract with no pain in your back. If you do these movements enough, you will start to notice that the default mechanism won't be going into extension, it will just be hip extension. So again, with the, with the glute bridge, two to three sets until you feel some fatigue, can do that a couple times a day. Great to do before you walk so you get your brain dialed into using your glutes. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is a half side bridge. So basically we're gonna be in this position here, okay? Just like we did before, we're gonna raise this leg up, brace the core, excuse me, don't brace the core yet, find neutral spine, okay, which is right here. Now brace the core, drive this knee to the ground, push the forearm into the ground, and raise your chest up so you stay in a good position. Come up like this, push your hips forward. Again, not extending. The hip here and here is what's creating the movement. Hold this up till you get a little fatigued. You should feel the muscle down here working and here working. And then as you come back, it's important not just to drop, okay? You want to use that hip to hinge back. Hinge back to the start. Don't let go of your brace. Keep the spine neutral. Come back up again. Again, hold it up until you're tired. As many reps as it takes till you get tired, flip to the other side. Okay, so again, quick review. Squeezing the glutes, staying in relative neutral while you extend, okay? Super important. Getting into your bird dog, getting into your bridge, getting into your half side bridge so you can get your brain used to neutral positioning without defaulting to extension using your glutes. And then one last thing, another thing you wanna be conscious of is as you create movement, you really wanna understand what it feels like to have hip extension versus lumbar extension in a standing position, which we did bilaterally this way. Also, you wanna do it unilaterally because if you're moving properly and you wanna reach down like a golfer's position, you don't wanna hyperextend this. So really what you wanna understand is the ability to bring this leg back, squeeze your glute, not feeling anything here, you know you've got hip extension. If you get here and you feel that smashing sensation in your back, you're defaulting to the injury, okay? So again, remember hip extension is key on this, okay? So again, there's your, there's your hip extension, your, um, your lumbar extension fixes. We use a lot of glute work, try to hip extend, not lumbar extend, and your back is gonna feel better.
So hopefully you like this, hopefully you found it informative. Um, leave me a comment and let me know if you like it. Uh, let me know if you think I'm crazy. And don't forget to subscribe and check out my book. This is all in there, Protect Your Back 101. And hit us up on the socials. And until next time, don't forget to protect your back.